Hello. Continuing with uh, lecture 14, learning objective four from chapter six. Um, the video is getting kind of long, so I decided I'd go ahead and break this up. Um, so I wanted to continue talking about ground state and our excited state. So the ground state, that is where our electron is going to originate. or where the electron is in an atom. When no energy has been inputted or has been absorbed by the atom. It's natural state or native state. Um, if we're talking about hydrogen, hydrogen, our ground state is going to be n equals 1. But for almost any other atom besides hydrogen and helium, the ground state of the electron depends on which electron you're talking about. Um, so some of them will be n equals 1, some will be n equals 2, n equals 3. Um, there are many electrons in some of these species, so there will be several options for uh, the ground state depending on which atom or which electron you're looking at. And then if we look at our excited state, our excited state is where the electron goes once it's absorbed enough energy to be promoted to a higher energy state. So it's a higher energy state than the ground state. So its n value will be greater. Um, so this excited state, uh, you get to an excited state with an electron when that electron has at, absorbed enough energy to get to that excited state. An electron is promoted into an excited state from a ground state. when the electron has absorbed enough energy so that is our our energy minima so between if we look back here to go in between n equals 1 and n equals 2, we have to add in this amount of energy. To go in between n equals 2 to n equals 3, we have to add in this energy. To get from n equals 1 to n equals 3, we have to add in this energy. So it just depends on what transition you're looking at, what electron you're looking at, how far it is away from the nucleus, as to how much energy is required to get from the ground state of that electron into an excited state. We call absorption the process of absorption the electron absorbing the energy from a photon, causing that excitation from the lower ground state into that higher excited state.
can actually look at that absorption value um, with an instrument called a absorption instrument. Um, so you can actually find out what energy is required to have an electron go from a ground state to an excited state. Eventually, however, the electron is going to go from that excited state back down to ground state. It does not want to stay in that excited state. So when it does, it's going to um, release the energy that it had absorbed to get up to that excited state. So an electron will then release that energy, release the energy that it had absorbed. And this is going to be in the form of a photon. So this process is called emission. So it's going to emit a photon of light. Um, another possibility is losing that energy in the form of a phonon uh, or heat. And we see this when we look at a light bulb, for instance. So with uh, traditional incandescent light bulbs, you're heating up that filament. That filament is emitting light. Um, so you're basically exciting the electrons within that light bulb um, or within that filament and uh, through heat, and it's going to emit phonon, photons of light. But it also emits phonons of heat, which is why an incandescent light bulb is so hot. So heat is used to get the electrons from a ground state into an excited state. And then as the electrons relax back down, light and heat are emitted. So the electrons in electricity heat up the uh, filament. The filament then uh, goes from a ground state to an excited state, and then relaxes back down, we get light and heat. So this is exactly how a light bulb works. Now, um, there is a way to determine the energy of absorption and emission when we're looking at hydrogen. So if we want to determine our absorption and emission energy, we are going to use the following equation. Delta E is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, one over n final squared minus one over n initial squared. So just taking that equation that we looked at earlier and applying it as a delta E instead of just an energy value. So this will give us the energy of both absorption and emission, where absorption will just be the positive value, emission will be the negative value. So if we have an absorption process, we would say that our n final is going to be greater Then our n initial, right? Because we have an absorption, so we're going from a lower energy state to a higher energy state, such as n equals one to n equals two, where this is our initial, this is our final. In this case, if we look at our equation, if n final is greater than n initial, 
this value will be smaller than this value. And we will have a negative here in these parentheses. And then when we multiply it by this negative, we'll have an overall delta E that is positive, which makes sense because it is absorption process. We're absorbing energy. Energy is being inputted into our energy bank. In an emission process, here we have N final being less than N initial. So we have the opposite case. And here, if we look at our equation again, if n final is less than n initial, then we're going to have a larger number subtracting a smaller number, which would give us a positive value in our parentheses. And then we multiply a positive value by a negative value, we will have a delta E, which is negative again, which makes sense because it is emitting energy. Okay, let us try an example using this equation. We want to know what is the wavelength of energy associated with the following transitions. In hydrogen. <laughs> okay, so if we have n equals 2 going to n equals 1, this is an emission process. We're going from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. We solve for our delta he E here first, and we get negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times by 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. And when we multiply this out, we get a energy value of negative 1.64 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. So this is how much energy is released. If we want to go from energy to wavelength, we want to take the absolute value of our energy the reason we do this is because we're just looking at the change of energy, not the sign of energy, um, to determine what wavelength. We don't, we can't have a negative wavelength. So when we put energy into this equation, it needs to be a positive value. So we'll take 1.64 times 10 to the negative 18 joules set that equal to our Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times by seconds, that's by our speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters over seconds, divided by our wavelength. With this equation, and with our absolute value of our energy, we can figure out what wavelength of energy is used in this transition. Now, if we're thinking about this, hopefully we realize that this is this wavelength is going to be the wavelength that was that was going to be emitted. So this is the light of emission, not the light of absorption. So we're gonna take our six point six two six times ten to the negative three four multiply it by 2.998 times 10 to the 8th, and then divide it by 1.64 times 10 to the negative 18, and we get 1.6 21 times 10 to the negative 7 meters which is also equal to 
121 nanometers. So if we have this excitation process going from, sorry, emission process going from n equals 2 to n equals 1, a wavelength with the energy 121 nanometers will be emitted. Okay, let's look at an absorption process instead. So going from n equals 2 to n equals 3, we're going from a lower energy state to a higher energy state, so this is going to be absorption. So in this case, the one before, this is the wavelength of light that's going to be emitted. In this case, we're looking at in this case, we're looking at the wavelength of light that is required to cause an absorption. So we'll again take our delta E is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times by 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. And multiply all this out, we get 3.03 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, a positive value, which should make it make sense because now we're dealing with um, an absorption process. So again, we'll still take the absolute value, even though it's positive. And we'll put this into our energy equation. So we can figure out what the wavelength of light that is associated with this transition is. Okay, so. And we get a value of, make sure I put that in right. There we go. We get a value of six point five six times ten to the negative seven meters which is equal to six hundred and fifty six nanometers so you need to absorb a wavelength of light at six hundred and fifty six nanometers or greater well or smaller uh, which is a greater energy in order to get absorption um, going from n equals two to n equals three that is everything for learning objective number four, lecture 14. See you guys later.